Having reviewed pretty much every Mac and iPad over the last couple of years, there's one thing that they all have in common, and their webcams aren't great. Regardless of which Mac you have, pretty much all of them come off a bit soft, and if you don't have perfect lighting conditions, the image can easily sway between being super grainy or extremely blown out. I've honestly never been a fan of how my skin looks on MacBook or iPad cameras, and the iPad camera in landscape mode also has a pretty awkward positioning, but the Sopo C1 fixes all of those issues. This is a 4K camera that has infinitely more detail. The difference is night and day. It doesn't suffer from any of the same issues that those Apple webcams have. And beyond that, we haven't even gotten into the build quality on this little guy yet which is on a whole different level compared to almost any other alternative out there. If you're on a lot of video calls, maybe you're traveling, streaming, or podcasting, whatever it is where camera quality is important to you, you're gonna wanna take a hard look at the Opal C1. So if that sounds like you, stick around and let's get into it. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. Webcams are something that historically I haven't been very excited about because usually, who are we kidding? There's just not been anything exciting about them. More often than not, they don't look great design-wise and they can tend to give off potato vibes in terms of image quality, but the Sopo C1 is probably the first standalone webcam that's really won me over. I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with this camera to some extent, with some well-known creators using it. MKBHD did a segment in an everyday tech video featuring the Opal C1. You may have seen this in a Casey Neistat video, and Sarah Dietschy has also talked about it as well. Most importantly for me, a lot of other tech creators that I respect or know personally also love this camera. So when Opal reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to check out and review the C1, my answer was immediately yes. The first thing that drew me to this was the design. The C1 is designed by Kenny Sweet, who is an industrial designer that's also behind the Pixel Buds, Beats Pros, and a bunch of other great products. The webcam itself has won design awards, but interestingly enough, so is the packaging, and it's easy to see why. Unboxing the C1, it's all very well thought out and put together. The camera and the USB cable are the first things that you see when you open it up. There's some text on the box underneath telling you what's included with some instructions and you can easily lift out that box where you'll find some more detailed instructions, the camera mount, and a little assembly key tool to attach the mount to the camera. I love seeing companies that put a lot of thought into every aspect of their design. Everything is not only aesthetically pleasing but they're basically guiding you through this whole process and anytime that I see this level of thoughtfulness in a product, it just makes me feel a lot more confident in the quality of it. Looking at the actual camera, the one that I have here is white, but you can get it in black as well. It's got a textured matte finish with glossy speckles, and in a general sense, it's quite minimal and unassuming. The idea behind this design was that it should resemble a beautiful piece of furniture, so no big logos or bright colors, and I'd say it definitely gives off that vibe. I think it looks fantastic in my desktop setup, and it's probably the only webcam that I'd consider having in the space aesthetically. The mount is an off-white gray color, and it's extremely versatile. You can attach it onto your MacBook or a desktop monitor with a hinge at the back, or you can set it on a surface where you can adjust the angle. A lot of mounts that sit on your monitor will obstruct the screen a little bit, but you don't have to worry about it on the C1. And hey, if that mount isn't your thing and you don't want to use it at all, there's a quarter inch thread on the bottom of the C1, so you can use a tripod and a ball head. I'll rig this up however you like with any other video gear that you might have. Somewhat related to that mount, the thing that I like is Opal includes this little magnetic lens cover, so instead of doing what I used to do, which was move the stand to rotate the camera up and down so it wasn't pointing at me when it wasn't in use, I can just pop that cover on and leave everything where it is. And if you're traveling, that cap protects the lens as well. The camera sensor is a Sony IMX378, which you'll see in a lot of smartphones. It's capable of 4K resolution and is the biggest sensor that you'll find in a webcam. So essentially what that means is it'll be able to capture more light and information than other webcams and also add a bit more depth as well. Beside the camera, there's a mic grill and underneath that grill, there's a noise canceling mic array that combine together to form something Opal calls mic mesh that provides clear, crisp audio. All this stuff that I've been talking about can be controlled from inside the Opal app. This is a free application that you install with the C1, so there's no subscription required or anything like that. And from within here, I can control a whole host of settings from standard camera controls and tweaking my picture to effects and audio adjustments. There's a bokeh effect that I find works a lot better than similar functionality in chat apps like Zoom, and probably the coolest feature, Face Lock, which is very similar to Center Stage if you've used that on an Apple product. The thing that I like about Face Lock versus Center Stage is often with Center Stage, it can tend to have an unwanted zoom effect at times where it's kind of dramatically slowly zooming in. 
which is not an effect I particularly want if I'm in a meeting where face lock seems to provide a simpler rotation, which I like a little bit more. While that is a great feature, obviously the most important part of any webcam is gonna be the picture. So let's just take a second to appreciate the video quality that this camera puts out. All right, what you're looking at right now is the internal camera on my MacBook. As you can tell, it's not terrible by any means. It's a little bit soft and it does tend to bring up the shadows or something a little bit, I find, where it looks a little unnatural. But now let's move over to the Opal C1 and see what that looks like. All right, now we're over on the C1. As you can tell, things look a lot better visually. There's just a lot more detail and sharpness on this camera. And the colors in the scene are a lot more accurate, so you don't get any of those weird issues like on the MacBook camera where it's trying to brighten up dark areas too much and everything is being recorded on the internal mic on the C1. So this should give you a general idea of what that sounds like and what it looks like visually. Another really cool thing that I wanna mention, I talked about this in my iPad desktop video, but with iPad OS 17, you can potentially use a webcam instead of the internal one as well. You obviously can't use the Opal software with this, seeing as it is iPad OS and that is only in beta, so it could be a while before we see this feature show up in a production release of iPad OS. But in the beta, you can see that the C1 works quite well. Again, night and day compared to the internal cam and it takes care of that really awkward front-facing camera placement on the iPad when you're in landscape mode. For me, where I've been using this the most is at my desktop with my Mac Studio. Previous to the C1, I've been trying to use continuity camera using my iPhone as my camera and mic, but honestly, that has been really hit or miss and pretty unreliable in terms of actually showing up in Mac OS at times. Having a nice camera like this solves that issue and I don't have to worry about it anymore. It looks good and it not only adds to the overall look of my setup, but I get very high video quality and it's just a lot more smoother of an experience than anything that I've previously used. The C1 will definitely be a mainstay at both my desk setup or if I had traveling and have to do any video calls while I'm away. If you struggle with some of those same pain points that I've had or you're just looking to up the quality of your camera, whether that's for work, your podcasting or streaming, I don't think that you'll be disappointed with the Opal C1. That being said, I am curious how many of you value a premium webcam like this? Is this something that you'd use and what are the features that you like the most on here? Let me know in the comments down below. That's it for me today my friends. I hope you found this video useful or entertaining. If you did feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more tech related content or take turns wearing each other's shoes for an entire day, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.